mathematics, and this is a three coins problem. Before the video begins, make sure you have a solid understanding of combinatorics, logical thinking, and the hook length theorem. If you don't know what the hook length theorem is, don't fret, we'll be going over this in the video, and there's a link in the description of a video by Number Fail which explains it in more detail. Alright, so the problem states, let three coins or letters X, Y, and Z be placed on a board like so. Your goal is to move these to this position. You can only move X, Y, and Z through legal moves. A legal move consists of moving a letter or a coin one space to the right, if and only if that space is empty. So all of these are legal moves. However, let's say you wanted to move Y one space to the right. You would not be able to do so as Z would be in the way. You cannot also override like shown here. Finally, you may not move backwards. Can you figure it out? Pause the video now and try this out yourself. Alright, so the first thing we notice is that we can represent each move as a different unique symbol. So when Z moves here, we can represent that as Z sub 1. When Z moves here, we can represent that as Z sub 2. And here, Z sub 3. We can do the same for Y and X. And so we end up with nine unique symbols. Now, a way that we can move X, Y, and Z to their corresponding places would be equivalent to one unique rotation, or rather, permutation of these nine symbols. However, we do have some constraining factors, which we will go over. Firstly, these can be organized in two ways. The first way that they can be organized is Z1 must come before Y1, which must come before X1. The second way in which they have to be organized is that n1 must come before n2 must come before n3. What I mean by those is that if you take, let's say, i b2, then the z2 symbol must come before the y2 symbol, which in turn must come before the x2 symbol. The same applies for n1, n2, and n3. If you take n such that n is z, then z1 must come before z2, which in turn must come before z3. This means that we have two dimensions of organization, and this gets us from our 1 by 9 row to our 3 by 3 square. Now, we want to organize this square like so, such that it's ascending downwards and ascending to the right. And this takes us to the hook length theorem. The hook length theorem states that if you have, say, nine integers in this square, then they can be arranged in a specific amount of ways. The hook length theorem is actually a little bit more specific than that. The hook length theorem states that if you have a closed figure of squares, like so, and you want to arrange some numbers in them such that they are ascending downwards and to the right, then you take each square and apply the hook length to them. You find their hook length. So let's take this square for an example. We need to find the hook length of this. Well, what exactly is the hook length? The hook length is simply the amount of squares to the right, so that would be one, plus the amount of squares below it, that would also be 1, plus the square itself, which would be 1. So there would be 3 total in this square. Let's take an example. We have this. Let's try and find the values of the hook lengths of each cell. We know that this cell has a hook length of 1, this one has a hook length of 1, and this one has a hook length of 1. Let's try and find this cell. There's one cell to the right, and zero cells to the bottom. So we can say that this has a length of 2, or rather a value of 2. 
filling this in for each cell, we have this is 3, this is 4, and this is 6. The next part of the theorem states that you must take the product of all of these, and you must divide that from the number of total cells factorial. So what do I mean? In this example, there are 7 cells total. So we will take 7 factorial and divide that by 6 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 1 times 1. Now let's expand the 7 factorial out. We get 7 times five, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Now we can cancel the 6's, the 4, the 3, and the 2's, and we end up with 7 times 5. 7 times 5 is 35, and thus 35 is the answer for this closed figure. So now we return back to our original figure. I filled in some of the hook lengths for you. Try and figure out the other hook lengths and return when you have it. Alright, so the first first cell that we're going to look at is this one. Well, there's none to the right, and there's one below it, so it has a value of 2. Now let's take a look at this cell. There's one to the right, and one below it, so it has a value of 3. Similarly, we can fill in the rest, and we have this. Now, observe that there are 9 squares, so we take 9 factorial and divide it by these. Now if we do that, we end up with an expression similar to this. Now we can fully simplify and solve this to get 9 factorial over 5 times 4 times 4 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 1 is 42. And that, my friends, is our answer. I hope you all enjoyed this explanation for the three coins problem. This problem actually originates from the 2017 KLE contest. It's a very interesting problem, and the solution and approach to it that I've shown is very, very fun, and it's an easy way to solve a lot of different and unique kinds of problems. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.